If you enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you would like to support the channel on Patreon or PayPal, the links are listed below. After the film Escape from the Planet of the Apes in 1971, the Planet of the Apes cycle of movies continued with the fourth Apes film, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, in 1972. In Escape, Cornelius and Zira are killed, with the baby chimp believed by the government to be dead. But it is revealed at the end that the baby chimp is not actually dead, but hidden away by circus owner Armando. Conquest of the Planet of the Apes is set in 1991, 18 years after the events of Escape. The world is run by a controlling US government. A deadly virus from space has destroyed all the cats and dogs, leading to humans using the apes as pets and slaves. The baby chimp grows up to be Caesar, the liberator of the apes. Armando is killed while in the custody of the government causing Caesar to assimilate himself into the ape training facilities. Caesar is put up for auction and sold to the city's ape-hating governor, Breck. Caesar is then placed under the command of Governor Breck's personal assistant, MacDonald, who is empathetic to the plight of the apes. Caesar begins to plot a revolution, leading the apes in an uprising against the human government. This uprising would act as the first step to the complete downfall of the human race. It was pretty much planned by producer Arthur P. Jacobs from the start to do a series of the Planet of the Apes films. With the fourth Planet of the Apes film, he wanted to come full circle with the rise of Caesar as the leader of the apes. Jacobs thought this would be the very last film, so it would fit in with the beginning of the ape story. Screenwriter Paul Den would craft a story that drew directly from the events of the 1965 Watts riots in Los Angeles and the civil rights movement, which would make Conquest the most political film of the series. Conquest of the Planet of the Apes was the third screenplay by Paul Den for the ape series. Many of the scenes were too bloody and were cut from the movie after a pre-release print was shown to a preview audience and was the first film of the series that was considered to be the most brutal and violent. In the first preview at Phoenix, mothers took their children running down the aisles to get out of the theatre. After the preview screening in Phoenix on June the 1st of 1972, the impact of the graphic content caused the producers to rework the film, even though they didn't have a budget to do so. The censor wouldn't pass the, the film the first time. The violent opening scene would appear in the novelization and the comic book adaptation of the movie. In recutting the movie, they used existing takes and redubbed the dialogue by McDowell, creating a more optimistic ending. In 2008, an unrated Blu-ray of the film was released with the original graphic cut scenes from the film restored. Interesting to note that in the early version of the original screenplay, there was a bleak standoff at the end, with Caesar ordering and broadcasting the cold-blooded execution of Governor Breck. The original draft of the script would show more of a rapid evolution of the apes, who become more intelligent, showing the full progression from pets to slaves to masters. To direct, Jacobs would hire J. Lee Thompson, director of films like Cape Fear and The Guns of Navarone. Thompson would be skilled at handling projects that were large in scale and low in budget, which would make him up to the many challenges of conquest. Interesting to note that Arthur P. Jacobs originally approached Thompson to direct some years earlier in the early stages of the first Planet of the Apes film but he had to turn it down due to scheduling conflicts. Thompson embraced the themes of Den's screenplay and gave the film a documentary style with news broadcasts featured in the film, which gave it a realistic look and tone. He would also maintain interest in the franchise ever since he was invited to direct the original Planet of the Apes. With the cast, Roddy McDowell would return 
but this time as Caesar. Ricardo Montalban would return as Armando, with new additions to the cast, like Don Murray as Governor Breck, Natalie Trundy, who was married to producer Arthur P. Jacobs at the time, was cast as Caesar's mate. Lisa, in both Conquest of the Planet of the Apes and Battle for the Planet of the Apes, she would appear in four Planet of the Apes films, with her first role playing a telepathic mutant, Albina, in Beneath the Planet of the Apes and playing a human doctor, Dr. Stephanie Branton, in Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Conquest was Natalie Trundy's first appearance in full ape makeup. Severne Darden plays Culp, and Culp again in the fourth follow up, Battle of the Planet of the Apes. Another actor who features in the film, who starred in two ape films, is actor John Randolph as Commissioner Chairman. Ricardo Montalban and John Randolph are the only actors in Conquest to reprise their roles from Escape. Paul Coma, who had a substantial career on TV, plays a policeman. He starred in an episode of Star Trek titled Balance of Terror as Starfleet Officer Styles, and playing a sheriff in an episode of The Invaders. He also starred in three episodes of The Twilight Zone. Interesting to note that Coma played the role of Markison alongside Apes actor Roddy McDowell in the 1960 Twilight Zone episode People Are Alike All Over. Conquest was the first film of the series to not feature any characters from the original Pierre Bowl novel. Conquest was given the small budget of 1.7 million, so director J. Lee Thompson had very little to work with and had to get creative with what little money he had. Sequels at that time were considered to be quick and disposable. In order to save money, they used the new Century City Complex in Los Angeles as the primary location for the film. Century City had previously been a part of the 20th Century Fox backlot, and the buildings had that perfect futuristic look to them. With clever use of camera angles, it gave the buildings more scope, which made it feel like an entire city. Additional exteriors were shot on the indoor sets at the Fox back lot in Century City. Other shooting locations included the University of California, Irvine campus, in Orange County, which was used in the majority of the shots. The large set of the Ape Management Center was in fact a redress set of Administrator Matthew's office and the Triton Control Complex from the film City Beneath the Sea in 1971. TV producer Owen Allen even contributed to the film with props and costumes like the Seaview jumpsuits from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and the computers and cabinets which were used in shows like The Time Tunnel and from his other productions. The ape jumpsuits were actually used as a cost-saving method, so the actors didn't have to wear ape fur on their bodies. They also saved on the makeup budget, which shows in various scenes in the film, with some clearly fake-looking ape masks, which were pullover masks. The exciting music for Conquest was composed by Tom Scott. Scott was originally a session musician, who became a composer on television shows like The Streets of San Francisco and Starsky and Hutch. To save money, Scott used music cues from the previous movie, Escape, and again reused musical cues for Battle of the Planet of the Apes. Cues for the film's finale music were taken directly from the Planet of the Apes score, composed by Jerry Goldsmith. On June 30th of 1972, 20th Century Fox released the film. As with most of the ape films, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes had done very well at the box office, debuting at number one when released, making well over its small budget of just over a million, making almost 4.5 million on its opening weekend. The climatic speech at the end is actually very prophetic and prophesizes that humanity in the end will ultimately turn on itself to allow the apes to rule the earth and be the more dominant species. McDowell undoubtedly gives his best performance of the series. Conquest of the Planet of the Apes 
isn't a perfect film, but despite its flaws, it's definitely a powerful and chilling entry into the Apes franchise. Screenwriter Paul Den's script is one of the high points of the franchise and one of the best pieces of writing in a science fiction movie. Critics were half and half about the movie, with a Los Angeles Times critic writing that the film may be the best since the first film of the franchise. Another critic remarked, It is a simple but powerful premise, thoroughly developed with a good balance between dialogue and action and well directed by J. Lee Thompson. The 2011 reboot, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, was actually a loose remake of Conquest, but with different plot elements. Conquest of the Planet of the Apes is not a perfect film, but it's one of my favourites of the series, and it was an analogy of that time's social political climate, which can be relatable to today's current climate. My name's Jonathan. Thanks for watching.